Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, my apologies, there was no uh, weekend video. I usually record the weekend video either Saturdays or Sundays, but I figured uh, I had nothing planned on Sunday. I didn't realize my son's, uh, not only my son's, but my, both my kids' a basketball AU schedule is crazy. Uh, I had a whole tournament planned on Sunday, which I, I had no idea even existed. So I didn't have any, any uh, unfortunately, any time. But Never behold, here we are. So I, I can honestly say, and before we get started, guys, I want to welcome all the new uh, viewers. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, uh, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Um, you know, we, we again, unbiased, uh, unbiased um, talk about what we believe uh, is going to happen based on data. Based on that data, here's how we begin. Um, I bet a lot of you guys probably share the same uh, kind of day. I don't care if you trade pivots like me or you trade uh, the mid cap market, if you trade whatever you, whatever your, your drug of choice is. I, I, I bet you, right? I pretty much bet you, um, not knowing your process, not knowing your account size, anything, I'm, I'm almost positive to say you probably had a pretty slow day. Uh, and th today was probably one of the slowest days I can remember. Well, definitely for 2023, but probably in a very, very long time. Uh, literally, we had one pivot at the open. Uh, Tesla broke out of a little bit of a range. Uh, and that was it. That was it. You could have literally turned off your computer in uh, the first, after the first half hour of the day. Uh, market did absolutely nothing. When you look at the scoreboard, the Dow up 200 points, the NASDAQ down 55. Uh, not a huge disconnect to this disconnection, but still, nevertheless, you had over the weekend uh, Citizens Bank buying the assets of SVB. As you can imagine, uh, you know, banks are strong today, I guess, if you can call them strong. I guess, you know, going from Citibank going from 52 to 42 uh, and being up a dollar is like winning uh, the shortest dwarf, dwarf competition. I don't know if that's politically correct. I apologize to any. Uh, any anybody in the audience, but that's kind of what it was. It's like a gambler losing a hundred thousand dollars and giving and running around naked, uh, pounding a chest after five hundred dollar victory. So that's kind of where we are right now. The banks, um, you know, they 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 rose. The S and P uh, rose a little bit. The Dow rose a little bit, um, and and that's about it. We we are incredibly stuck into this channel. Okay, uh, you know, from the good point of. Uh, what we're seeing is, yes, I, I think the market is definitely stabilizing. You can see it. Uh, the more days that are going uh, past uh, the initial, uh, you know, the initial collapse after the first bank and then the second bank and the third bank. I don't even know how many banks have already collapsed. But the point is the market is definitely stabilizing. How do you know it's stabilizing? We are shrinking in channels. And the last three days, all channels have been shrunk, especially on the NASDAQ 100. Uh, and if you look at the queues, they're trading in a deadly, deadly tight channel. And if you traded today anything in the NASDAQ 100, uh, you heard the word chop, you heard the word uh, boring and sleepy, and it, it was all that stuff. It really is all that stuff. I, I really think today was one of those days that no matter how you trade, right, unless you are a crazy hyper micro scalper uh, on, on, on the one minute channels, I, I think today was a very, very a lethargic, a complacent day. And the question is, well, what is the market waiting for, right? Uh, we're too far away from the next Fed meeting, okay? Uh, there's nothing really imminent as far as political unrest, as far as uh, I know. This COVID thing kind of left, like you could you could make an argument it was never here, right? As far, uh, they just, you have, have you guys noticed nobody's even talking about COVID? It's like it never even happened, right? No, no more commercials anymore. You don't need to do your 18th booster. Nothing has happened. But again, it's a whole different conversation. Again, that's how slow the day was. You start thinking of things that have nothing to do with the market. So we have to, as traders, you could only do two things, right? You can, well, you could do three things. You could sit there, complain, uh, and all that crazy stuff that is as absolutely uh, is going to mentally drain you. Okay, uh, there's nothing you could do about it, right? You could pretend it's not happening, put on your blinders, and trade the market like everything is all good, right? You'll get chopped up. You'll get. Uh, your money will go away, your brain cells will go away, uh, everything will go away, or you can be an adult, right? Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's something called sitting on your hands. And usually, 
uh, when, when you hear people say, well, sit on your hands, they usually, that means they don't have a process enough to trade both sides of the market, right? You ever hear people start around as well, cash is a position as the market is blatantly going lower as you can get some great value into the downside. But this is not one of those times. I think this is one of those situations that you kind of have to, we, we kind of have to let the market do the legwork for us. And you can see here how tight this channel is on the queues every single time. And it's it's not like the queues are going, you know, raining from the whole channel and coming right back up. They're just stalling out. Look how tight this channel is here. It was basically trading from 309 to 307 literally here uh, for the last five bars and that's not a good thing so technically speaking uh, what we need to happen is the queues need to lose this 307 you see this whole 307 channel that's been the low they've been defending that 307 level for the last three days that's the level that needs to breach if they can if the bears can get take control of the 307 level then i think all these stocks that are sitting in this really aggressive ugly uh contraction cycle they will start getting pulled down. Now, they, what, what was cool about this morning was we were sitting there and you're like, all we wanted was a directional bias. We didn't care which way. So the one thing that we did not want to see was the market closing in the middle of the range. I either wanted a really big aggressive market rally to the top of the range or a big aggressive nasty sell off to the bottom of the range so we can get value on those ranges. And guess what? We close right in between, right? 307 is here. We're at basically 309. So look, is it possible we can get back down to this 307 level? Yeah, I'd like to see that because at this point, you know, when you sit on your hands once, you're responsible, right? That's a good thing. You sit on your hands twice, you're still responsible. You start getting antsy. The longer we stay in this distribution channel, eventually even the most, you know, professional statue patient uh, trader eventually is going to snap and start, uh, you know, hitting, hitting buttons, uh, clicking the mouse. And unfortunately, that's never a good thing. You, you don't trade because the market's open. You trade because you have value. This is when your this is your chance to, you know, to start developing that and letting go of that FOMO gene. The FOMO gene is a very, very powerful gene. It's in everybody's DNA. The faster you can get rid of it, the better. And although a day like this or the last couple of days might seem like, oh my God, this market's like not doing anything. God, go up, go down, do something, right? It's actually developing your, your ability to be a professional. And you know, it's, it's not gonna show up on the scoreboard. Uh, it's not gonna really you know, make a dent in your, uh, in your uh, profit and loss column. But the point is the longer you can withhold without prostituting your money, the better you'll be, right? The better, more responsible, more fiscally responsible you'll be going forward in your career. And it's not gonna mean much to you now, but it really is starting to, to put really good developing blocks in your subconscious when the market does expand. And I think the market will expand uh, in the next couple of days. I think when the market come, you know, really starts to expand, you'll really appreciate the days that the contraction is taking place. So you can actually sit there, watch the market, not really do anything. And, and then when you get an expansion channel, when stocks close at the top or the bottom of the range, that's when you can get super duper aggressive uh, for the next trading day. And that's exactly kind of where we, we start today. You know, if you look at a lot of charts tonight, you're gonna see a lot of stocks sitting in the bottom of the ranges or at least getting to their bottom of the ranges. So it's very, very tough for me, despite the market, again, putting in now one, two, three, four days in a row, right? You see this four days in a row of higher lows on the queues, despite not doing anything, we're still putting in higher lows. So is it possible at any single day the market wakes back up? Absolutely, but for that to happen, we're gonna have to start reclaiming back this 313 level. And if you look at the 60 minute view, that's where we got rejected. So you know we're right now four or $5 away from the top of the channel, and we're about $2 away from the bottom. So again, if you're playing the, the, the probability game, right? If we're four from the top and two from the bottom, well, let's see if at least the bottom channel could finally, uh, can finally uh, confirm. I, I don't know if it will, but again, if you go through your charts tonight, you'll start seeing a lot of names that potentially could be uh, pretty good for tomorrow if the Qs do lose the bottom channel here at 307. And here's some names that I like, right? Look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA looks like it's starting to slowly roll over. Had a great run, right? Phenomenal run. I know a lot of you guys did great with this thing. It's been an absolute great trader. But now it's putting in the opposite, right? If the Qs were putting in three, four days in a row of higher lows, this thing is putting in four days in a row of lower highs. You see that? High, lower high, lower high, lower high. If, the, if this thing could just get below this whole channel here and lose the five-day moving average, 
I think the video could get pulled. So if you know if this this would definitely be one of the uh, one of the first ones I'd be watching if we start losing that 307 level on on the, on the queues. Uh, look at Microsoft, right? Again, another one had a great run today, but you have to start looking for signs. Like la I think it was last night they got upgraded. The stock couldn't rally today. Again, if a leader cannot rally after an upgrade, it means it's getting tired. You see how it's just sitting here, right? You see how Microsoft is sitting here three days in a row defending on the five day? Same thing with NVIDIA. If, the, if Microsoft starts losing the five day, there will be a pull, right? There will be a pull as well. So if you go through the NASDAQ 100, you know, you'll see a lot of names. Uh, Tesla, you know, was kind of odd today. You know, Tesla got above Friday's channel. We had a nice opening range high. The stock started going higher. I'm like, all right, you know, the stock went up at two and a half dollars or so. I'm like, all right, there's a shot we get to 200 and all of a sudden today, the queues stole out, start going down and everything, uh, everything that went down with this. So it was very, very odd to see that. But now in a weird way, right now in a weird way, Tesla's closer to the bottom of the range here than it is to the top. So look, there's a lot of names that it's a very head scratching type of market. And again, just to kind of reiterate the point, you have four days in a row of Qs putting in higher lows, but yet you have three, four days in a row of the leaders putting in lower highs. Something's got to give here, right? Something's got to give. And I, and I believe in the next day or so, uh, we will get that a little bit moment of clarity. The key is just to stay, sit there and wait, right? Again, the market's not running away from you. There's no time limit. You don't need to put on 68 trades by 931 or your day is over. It's all about the long game, right? It's all about longevity. There's, there's times in your career that you want to really step on the gas. You want to step on the gas when everything is closing either at the top or the bottom of the range because that's going to give you the highest probability of the next day momentum. When stocks are in between and they still have to get to the bottom of the range or they still have to get to the top of the range, that's when you find yourself in that whole chop factor, the spin cycle. Unfortunately, if you don't know you're in this type of scenario, you're going to get chopped up again today, tomorrow. So the best thing that could possibly happen for us, and I'm really, really hoping uh, this does happen, at this juncture, I don't care which way we go. I really don't. We trade both sides of the market. It doesn't make a difference to me. But what we need to do happen desperately is either the market gaps up above the range or the market starts gapping down below the range to kind of trigger, uh, kind of trigger a, 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 a point of reference that the market could either confirm or defend again. But it's gonna be very, very tough to have that massive, massive expansion day if these stocks don't get out of their channels. So the best bet tomorrow, I am watching technology, although again, it's kind of a skewed little cycle, which you really don't see a lot of Qs putting in four days in a row of higher lows versus like a stock like NVIDIA putting in the same time four days in a row of lower highs. But again, welcome to the best reality show that's not on television. So let's just sit patient, let's sit tight. We have the stocks we're watching tomorrow, NVIDIA, Tesla, Microsoft, all, you know, all, the, you know, all the names. If they could start confirming back to the bottom of the range and the cues can follow, then yes, maybe we'll finally start to see an expansion worth of good excessive trading. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Again, this is, you know, this is what you signed up for, folks. It's not all, you know, every single day is not that guns blazing let's go pedal to the metal beast to the wall right you know it's some days you got to be an adult you have to sit and watch and sit and watch and when the finally coast is clear and the data uh kind of uh correlates to what you're seeing technically that's when you strike with extreme prejudice guys have a great night everybody god bless and i will see you all tomorrow take care